Much has changed in the last few weeks. More retail investment, silver got some attention, money moved out of some areas and into others. We are seeing a wild swing in every direction as volatility rises. There are times in which investments can be seen as healthy, sound and steady. Today, however, we are seeing a very different reality. There has never been a time in which investing has been so easy to come by and yet so wild and convoluted. It's truly an interesting time. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, we are going to talk about what's been happening just recently. We'll discuss silver. That was a wild ride. We'll look at the bubble that is clearly present in stocks. I've got some other information to share as well, so let's get into it right away. I covered what was happening with silver in the previous video, but I wanted to touch on this, some new information here. The United States Mint said on Tuesday that it was unable to meet surging demand for its gold and silver bullion coins in 2020 and through January, partly because of some shortages that were happening as well as demand, plant capacity issues. Just like everything else we've been seeing, there has been a serious real problem that has been going on in the supply chains of just about everything. And gold and silver seem like they are not an exception to the rule. Sales of U.S. gold bullion rose 258% in 2020, while silver coin demand was up 28%, U.S. Mint said. Heavy buying was continuing in 2021, squeezing supplies at our already had been tight throughout that period. Now, of course, you can see what has just happened. I covered in the previous one. By the time you're watching this video, who knows where the price is at, but certainly silver had gone up to a real exaggerated degree in, in just a period of a few days. Gold, not so much. But then that had come off the top as we see silver taking a breather. But the price had been suppressed for so long. And of course, there are moments in time where it can rise. It hit levels it hadn't in several years. So anytime you're going to have this type of activity, there's always going to be a pullback. The question is, can it stay at these levels and sort of form a support around there? This is something that we need to be paying attention to, not just because of, you know, it's a commodity or, you know, it's an asset and so on. We need to look at what's happening with precious metals because that gives us an idea of what's happening with the money supply. And when people lose faith in the currency, they go to real goods. They go to precious metals, of course. They go to land. They go to anything that is tangible. And that all depends on the time. That all depends on where we are in the cycle. There are many factors. But it is a very good thing to watch. Not the daily fluctuations, of course, but in general, where this is moving. And while we can notice the fact that, you know, over the last little while, the dollar has declined. But against what? When we see it against the euro, okay, sure, you could say that this has declined and you measure it against another currency, but these are floating against each other. When you measure it against real goods, we start to see a very different picture. It also depends on how long of time frame we're talking about here. So many factors, but certainly it is important to keep a very close eye on on a regular basis. I found this chart here, and since it's quite relevant to what we are seeing today, I wanted to bring it to you. Margin debt and free cash balances. It's no surprise to anybody that what we are seeing today is highly related, correlated to what's happening with individuals and the way that they invest. More options than ever before. And while options themselves aren't necessarily bad, people can use them wisely, we see people that do not have the experience using options and they get burned. We are seeing people that are using margin. They do this and as long as everything is moving up, as long as there's no volatility, as long as there's no bumps in the road, that's going to work out just fine. But as soon as there's a little bit of an issue, these people lose their shirts. And we're at record levels today record levels. While the chart goes back to 1980, there's nothing like this before that we have seen. The amount of margin has accelerated way, way beyond all of the previous bubbles. And it shouldn't surprise anything, anybody because we're noticing this 
being just one of so many different records. Every record is getting broken this time around, and the Federal Reserve has no intention. Even Neil Kashkari has come out and said there has not been any any reason that we should stop what we're doing. 0% interest rates, pumping up to all that QE, all the different alphabet programs that they've created, none of those. None of these things will be changed because we want to help the little guy out. Well, of course, they're creating all these excesses. They did this with the housing bubble. They did this with the dot-com bubble. They did this in every single previous bubble, and they are only going to run into a bigger problem because what are they going to do when the next crisis hits? Are they going to be able to bring interest rates down? Well, we're already at 0%. So do we go negative? Is that what the case is? Because they claim no way, no how, not going to happen. So are they going to accelerate the QE? You're already printing a historically high amount, and you're going to go even further? That's the expectation what does that say of the value of the currency that's why this brings me around to that because you know that okay this is inevitable you know that this is going to happen at some point next year 10 years who knows but the point is if that's the trajectory we should be at least at least being prepared for the worst we hope for the best we prepare for the worst Okay, so take a look at this article here. Now, even the pros on Wall Street are asking if the stock market has shot too high. Of course, they're not actually saying this. They believe that the market will always go up, but here we are. US stocks have been on a nearly nonstop rip higher since March of 2020, up roughly 70% to record heights, causing outsiders to say that the market had lost touch with reality. Of course, the economy itself doing so poorly, and yet the stock market could be going higher and higher. The justification from Wall Street was simply the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve will save us. The Federal Reserve is pumping up the cash. You don't have to worry because this is a buy-the-dip opportunity. And certainly at this point, that's what happened. I mean, we saw the fallout, and then we saw the certain stocks that were growing, the tech stocks. But the problem here is that you had names like Zoom and others who really a lot of the people buying into it didn't actually know and still to this day don't know how these companies actually will be producing a profit. But they certainly know that there's a lot of people using them and therefore the stocks were going crazy. Some of them started to go parabolic. They didn't bring any revenue in. They didn't have an actual real business model. But that didn't matter, of course, because they're the stay-at-home stocks, and therefore, let's all pile into that trade. Now, there's been a much better balance. There's no doubt about it. As we've moved into the later part of 2020, that changed a lot. But uh, definitely, the market is seeing some very unhealthy signs today. Recently, though, some of the market's action has become tougher to explain and not just the, you know, what you saw with GameStop and AMC and all these others, you know, that that just showed us that there is something very strange happening today. It's not just the stocks, not just those handful of stocks, so many other things that are really going in this wacky direction. Some investors are so hungry for huge payoffs that they're pouring into investments without knowing what their dollars will go toward. And by some measures, the broad stock market looks more expensive than it did before the 1929 crash, the same time frame where they were saying, we're on a permanently high plateau. Okay, they get into this further, but let's take a look at the, the next part of this article. A couple quotes to share with you from Grantham as well as from Schiller. Check this out. It is a privilege as a market historian to experience a major stock bubble once again. Japan in the 1989, 2000 tech bubble, 2008 housing and mortgage crisis, and now the current bubble. These are the four most significant and gripping investment events of my life. That's important because somebody like this, they are obsessed. They look at this information and they see it all. And it's data. It's, of course, affects real people, but certainly to witness it all form and the way it takes place, it is quite interesting. To be sure, most professional forecasters say the US stock market is not, of course, they would say that, not headed for a crash, just slower returns than before. But those optimists are having to do more work convincing others. Schiller had this to say. 
You might say a bubble occurs when people think that the market is going to go up, but worry that it may drop. That is where we are. And of course, you have no idea. I have no idea. Nobody knows until we look back in the pages of history, but we are in a very, very speculative time. There's no doubt about it. Bubble trouble. One popular way to measure whether the stock market is too expensive is to compare its price to earnings for companies over the prior 10 years adjusted for inflation. The market, the higher the measure is, the more expensive the market is. And we're just looking at that over this period going back all the way to from 1881 to the present time. And you could see that really we're at a historic high. There has been instances where it was higher, 2000, but we're basically in a time where it's unexplainable how far we have come. And yet we have the majority of those in the market today suggesting otherwise. I wanted to bring this to you because it gives you insight, not just on cryptos, Bitcoin and so on, but how a 1% move in one direction could push an asset in to you know to a whole different world essentially look at this based on arcs simulated portfolio allocations institutional allocations between 2.5 percent and 6.5 percent could impact bitcoin's price by 200,000 to 500,000 and then you look at the one percent allocation okay let's just move into that one percent that would add forty thousand dollars to the price forty thousand dollars that's showing you a 1% allocation for these different portfolios. Now think about that. As time goes on, we are seeing more institutions that are interested in it. And if they put just 1% in, the price would go much higher than it is today. And I start to think about all of the institutions that have been talking about it, haven't put their money in it, but have talked about it and seem interested in it and how much of a jump it would be not much to be honest with you to think of over the next let's say three years that a lot of them could start up new funds and so on there's certainly been a trend there with their financial companies so i'll be keeping an eye on it that's for sure and you should as well that's all for this video. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you're supporting me. I want to thank you for that. If you want to learn about e-commerce, you can do that for free at my website, the amazongps.com. If you want to learn about the financial system, central banks, interest rates, how to make money, all that stuff is in my two books. You can check it out at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook instead, the money, gps.com. Have you seen this video yet? If not, you definitely want to check it out. Click it. I'll see you there.